What is good guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down something very important about the overall market. I'm going to break down some very, very huge news that has come out. It's part of the reason why the market is very lackluster right now as we had a new catalyst and how this could affect the market moving forward. But let me first say that I am not a financial planner. Nothing I say is financial advice. And then don't forget about the Weeble link. The offer ends very soon. You deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks, but then $25,000 more, and you're guaranteed 75 of them. Anyways, what's happening with the markets? We have some negative news that has come out, guys. This is something very serious, and this is why the market's underperforming. So what's been happening is there's been a lot of uh, threats being made to Israel by Iran, and it's very serious because now the West is urging China to intervene with Iran, and there's a lot of actual fears right now that they may end up attacking Israel very soon. Uh, this is very important because Western diplomats are putting pressure on other countries to try to uh, kind of alleviate the situation. Tensions are spiking at the start of this month when we saw a lot of military advisors from Iran. Uh, basically, they ended up passing away because of a strike and they're vowing potentially revenge and things like that. I mean, it's very, very intense. And then on top of this, the supreme leader of Iran has come out and he said that Israel should be punished and will be punished for that. And then the U.S. is now restricting travel for Israel staff as Iran attack fears have risen. And the market's on thin ice right now, waiting to see if we end up getting some kind of attack. So this is huge news that's coming right now. Uh, geopolitical issues get in the way. But I, I feel a little pain just like kind of hearing about this because I really just think about who ends up getting hurt the most. And the answer is it's just innocent lives. Countless innocent lives that have nothing to do with war, you know, children, their lives are going to cost the most during times like these. When these politicians, these tensions just rise, these tensions between different countries, these divisions, and it's just horrendous any way around. It doesn't matter which country we're talking about. There are innocent lives, and I just don't, I just really don't want anything horrible like this to happen. So, you know, it's heartbreaking. It's horrendous that this is happening around the world. But it's something that we have to at least talk about. You know, I really hope that no more innocent lives are killed. But, you know, it, it's life. It's a part of what we've been seeing, you know, for decades and decades and centuries of anything. And thousands and thousands of years. And history just continues to repeat itself. But in this case, you know, let's just hope that things don't become too horrendous. This is also going to have a big effect on the stock market. And what's happening so far is... Firstly, there's a lot of fear about the situation, the fear of more war, and the initial response is likely going to be to the downside if we do end up getting an attack. And there's actually a strong possibility of that looking at how prepared people are becoming for this. The second possibility is if this were to happen, hypothetically, uh, gas prices are going to go up, the cost of oil is going to start to skyrocket again. And then inflation in the U.S. is going to go up as well and also all over the world. So it going up in other countries is going to affect the U.S. Uh, it's going to affect prices in China. It's going to affect everyone. Okay. And then once oil goes up again, things become more expensive. The Fed is in a position where they have to keep rates up for longer. And then that's going to be very negative for stocks like Tesla for the entire market. Okay. So that's going to be a lot more severe, if anything. It's something that's worth noting. It's something that's very serious. And I have to be very, very open-minded about this. I just want to give you guys a warning about how this is looking. Okay. That's very, very important to note. Even though SPY has all these puts, Max Payne's at 516. As of right now, these tensions are going to have a bigger role on the market, especially if something were to happen. So please be open-minded just to be safe. We got some Michigan consumer sentiment data. This is all very close to expectations, except for current conditions being a little bit weaker. And inflationary expectations are a little bit hot for April. Besides that, we just have a couple of Fed speakers and we'll see how things go. So with that being said, let's go over these charts just very quickly. Tesla is showing some weakness alongside the markets because of this news. Unfortunately, we, wouldn't, we didn't get much of a bounce now. So far, we don't have signs of it yet. And honestly, guys, you never know what could happen in this case. The market is very fearful about the situation. And I also want to add that if there's an attack and it happens within the next few hours or who knows when, if it happens, I really hope it doesn't. But if it happens, the market's going to tank like a rock. OK, that's going to be the initial move. This is not good news. Short term, yes, the market's going to tank, but medium term, the market will recover. Let me just give you guys a warning about that. This is very serious, very intense, not just for the markets, but also for you know people all over the world. 
humans continue to suffer. This war is just never ending. And it's, it's just it's very sad. To just really think about it, how many innocent children are going to be impacted, innocent lives, innocent men, innocent women, and the list goes on. Okay. So anyways, enough about that. Let's talk about now the charts. How are things looking? Honestly, we're looking a little bit more bearish as of right now. Tesla's kind of shuffling. It's been trading very sideways between its EMAs. Let me show you the five minute time frame just to show you what this looks like. So it got, kind of got rejected off these EMAs on the 50 and 200 EMA uh, areas, very close to the five minute time frame. And now we're getting very close to just slowly downtrending a little bit towards this 170 support. Tesla could downtrend just a little bit. And the market's dragging it down towards that 170 area. Tesla is showing some strength, though. It's not dropping as hard as it was before because, once again, it was in a place where it had potential to try to bounce. But like I said before, it's a lot more difficult for it to do much right now with all these tensions right now. So we have resistance at 172.5. And we're looking at that very, very carefully. And then if we break through that, watch 174 and then 175. If we lose this 171 support, look for 170.5, very tight level. And if that fails us, 168 is a real possibility. Tesla is dipping right now, showing some weakness. So we'll see how well it holds around and above 171. But I'm seeing some contraction in the chart. So please be mindful of that. As far as SPY goes, we tested this support all the way down here at 512.5. The last time we hit 512, we did see this thing attempt to rebound a bit. We're at support right now, but just be careful. The fears could get in the way and cause us to dip a bit more. Look at resistance at 513.5 to 514, 515.5, 516.5, 518.5, and 520. Those are going to be resistance levels. For support, we have 512.5 if we lose that. Uh, there's a little very, very minor amount of support at 511.8. But if that fails, I mean, if we don't get a bounce from there, we're falling all the way down to 510, then 508. So there is a risk of more downside on SPY. It's looking a little weak right now. We're at support, so we haven't lost critical support yet. But I just want to warn you about this weakness and also the possibility of even more downside if there is some kind of attack around the world. So just be careful. We'll see how things go. The chart is showing some weakness. There's a lot of fear right now. So the best thing to do is be very patient and give the market some time. We are looking a little bit lackluster because of all this negative news. On the QQQ, we have resistance at 440. Also at 441.5, the 50 EMA, and 442. We have support all the way down here, currently at 438.8 to 438. If we lose 438, look for 436. We're dipping a little bit. Uh, we're looking a little bit weaker on the QQQ. Not as weak as SPY, but there is still a risk of this dipping a bit more. So I want to give you guys a warning about that on the triple Q. Could dip a little bit more, especially because NVIDIA has lost its 892 support. And now we're sinking towards the 50 EMA, 882. If we lose that, watch 877 and 872. Uh, followed by 862. I could see this thing test 882. It's going to be a critical support. If we lose this, look for a bigger dip. If we hold this, we could try to rebound a little bit, but I just wanted to give you guys that warning to just be very mindful and careful of the potential weakness. Now, Apple was doing what the market could have done. That is try to bounce. We could have tried to bounce in the market if it wasn't for all this bad news, but because of this, it's making things much more difficult. And even for Apple, it was breaking out really hard, hitting the 178, and now even Apple's rejecting. We're back in the 175s. We're currently testing support at 175.68 to about 176. And then resistance, resistance is going to be around 176.5 and then 178. We have support barely at the levels I called out. If we lose 175.67, look for 174. If we lose that, that's the low from the pre-market. 172 is coming next. As of right now, Apple's rejecting a bit. It's going to be testing the 5 EMA, showing a little bit of contraction. And things are just continuing to remain in that trend. So I want you guys to be careful. SPY is at critical support right now. We'll have to see how well this holds up. And it's heavily dependent on what happens in terms of geopolitics and things like that. So with Amazon right now, we're kind of losing the 50 EMA. If we lose this, we could continue to stick a little bit lower to 185. We're barely at 186.5. So we're, we're barely holding support at 186.5. If we lose that, we look for 185 as key support. We have an imbalance all the way down there. Resistance watch 186.8 followed by 188, but there is a little bit of weakness on the chart. Also on Meta, uh, we're going to be looking at support at around 512.5. That's very close to our 200 EMA, this 512 zone. We also have 514 acting as a pivot area. 
You have resistance currently at 516.5 and 519. As of right now, we're kind of downtrending, looking a little bit weak alongside with the markets. So we're kind of slowing down a bit and we're looking a little lackluster right now, a little bit lackluster throughout the charts because of this very, very tense situation. So the market's very fearful about this. I would say to just be very patient, be very, very mindful and be prepared because if there is an attack today or if it does happen or something like that were to happen intraday, expect a rug pull in the markets, uh, at least for now. And things are very tense. I really hope that nothing horrendous happens today. I hope that, you know, no none innocent bloodshed happens. And I, I'm going to, you know, keep my fingers crossed and hope that nothing horrendous happens, mainly because of innocent lives, mainly because of the livelihoods, livelihoods, excuse me, of everyday people. And it also is going to affect our lives, you know, in terms of prices and such. Inflation is already high in the U.S. and it's still continuing to affect our lives. So there are all these different things that are going to ha- be affected by this one attack. So just get prepared in case something happens. It's going to have a big effect on Tesla and the markets. All right. So thank you for listening. I want to thank you so much. Please have a great day. I'll see you guys in just uh, a couple of hours. This was a very serious video. So take care, guys. I'll see you guys very soon. Let's hope the situation's okay when I return. So I'll give you, I'll keep you guys updated in the next couple of hours. We'll see how it goes. And peace out.